Hey everybody, Matt here with Take Roads List Travel, and today on the Chevy Avalanche, we are doing a big upgrade in the way of tow mirrors. Now, this is going to be a full install video. Uh, I've already opened this box up just to make sure you don't have seen me cut it open, but we're going to unpackage uh, these mirrors, get, let you see what they look like. And uh, also stick around later on in the video because there will be a link for a 10% uh, discount on these mirrors. So these are from Gita Motors and you can get their mirrors on Amazon. You can get them in either a full black body or in a chrome finish. And these are the, uh, the I believe, like the new gen style, I think is what they're commonly referred to. <clears throat> these are the, the tow mirrors that are found on 2015 the 2019 GM trucks, the heavy duties. So uh, we're just gonna get right into it, kind of see what these are and why we're doing this upgrade on the Avalanche. So biggest one is you're just able to see a whole lot more out of these mirrors than you do the factory ones. There's a ton more space on them and everything for seeing behind you. Uh, you also have the convex mirror on the base that lets you have better blind spot vision and everything. So opening up the box, uh, what we have is we have a small little customer support uh, little card. Uh, tells you where you can contact them, phone number, email, that kind of stuff. Uh, online support, anything like that. It says, uh, thank you for your purchase. If you experience any issues with your order regarding the compatibility, damaged packaging, general dissatisfaction, or other problem, please contact us using one of the methods below. And like I said, you have phone number, you have... Uh, email that you can get a hold of them on, um, all that good stuff. So, uh, good helpful information there. Uh, let's see here. A um, little bit of bubble wrap, some styrofoam and everything to keep everything safe. So, let's see. There we go. What exactly we've got. And we have a mirror. Beautiful. We have a mirror. And whoops, hold on. there's a couple other things down in here. Grab these real quick. There we go. We are underneath the bubble wrap. Sorry about that. So we've got uh, the mirror itself, uh, a little bag that has got uh, three of the uh, self-locking nuts on there. Uh, we also have three, looks like, uh, push pins with, oh, okay. So we've got three zip ties and three push pins. So. Uh, if you've watched my other video on how to change the side mirrors, uh, the wiring looms inside the inside the door, uh, behind the door panel, there are three white plastic T-clips that just press into, in, into the door, uh, the body of the door, and usually when you're removing the wiring loom from those, they break because they're old and they're brittle. These are to replace those. And you can just press these into the door and then put your wiring loom up against it and then run a zip tie through it and around the loom. So that was really good thinking on their part. That, good, good for you guys, Zeta Motors. Uh, let's see, and then we have a small bit of wiring. This is for the, uh, so if you look at these mirrors, like I said, on these, on these new gens, you have the LED clearance lights. And sorry if I blinded you there uh, with the sunlight coming in through the window. Uh, but you have these clearance lights. So um, you've got your standard uh, black and blue plugs for that hook up into your window switch panel. Um, and then you have this extra little plug right here, this little one, and this end will plug right into it. And then you have your lead and your ground running down. And these will run down and go actually through the door loom into the cab of the vehicle where you'll ground out the black on a grounding stud. Uh, there's one um, actually right above the, uh, the BCM at the bottom of the dash. And then your lead, and you have a couple options on your leads here. Uh, you can take and you can connect your lead into the dome light circuit, which is on the, on the driver's side of the dash, there's a small little fuse panel opening. Man, I'm sweating like crazy because it is hot today. Um, you got a fuse panel uh, on the driver's side of the dash and there's a wire, a main wire loom that runs there. You can open up that loom and there is a gray wire with a black stripe. That is your lead for your dome lights um, and like your courtesy lamps when you lock and unlock your vehicle. Uh, you can tie that into there and that's what and they'll turn on there. Or you can go down to the BCM and um, 
you can tie into your reverse lights, uh, which means that those will come on when you put it in reverse. A lot of guys will do that with backup cameras, that kind of stuff, so that the camera automatically comes on, powers on when they put it in reverse. We can actually do that with this, so those will come on in, in reverse, which is really what I want to use them for. Um, but uh, a couple things I'm not seeing. Uh, I am not seeing uh, ring terminals for the ground, and I'm also not seeing a T connector, uh, a T splice connector for your leads to tie into your wiring. Um, so hopefully Yida Motors will address that. Uh, I've reached out to them, let them know um, you're, you know, hey, this is something you're going to want in it and you're going to need. So uh, you're going to need to supply those and everything. Uh, this is a pretty small wire. It looks to be about a 18 gauge. Uh, I'd have to measure it. It's either 16 or 18 gauge. So um, if you just go off with the color coding, you're going to want a red ring terminal, a red T-type connector for those. As for the mirror itself, um, looks pretty good. Uh, so we've got a little bit of a dampener pad uh, that's going to go between the mirror and the body of the door itself. Obviously the three studs, wiring and everything. So like I said, uh, these are, you can get these in either pure black or chrome. These are the chrome finish. I'm actually going to uh, tape this off and I'm going to paint the chrome white to match the body of the truck. Uh, you can take the mirror apart to take these off so you don't have to um, so you don't have to tape everything off and risk getting overspray and everything like that but it's kind of dangerous because you have to pull the glass off and you can really risk breaking your glass if you do that uh, I do not recommend doing that because it's very easy to break the glass on these mirrors so I would recommend just taping it off and painting it if you want to do that you have a front uh, indicator light and then on the mirror itself you also have a built-in indicator light. Uh, these are power mirrors as far as um, the adjustability of the top mirror. Bottom convex mirror is fully manual. And then these are also heated mirrors. And everything so that uh, when you turn your defrost on, uh, the, the mirror will heat up and melt any ice or defog it as well. And then they do telescope and it is a manual telescope as you can see there. So uh, pretty cool. And then also they fold. So um, one of the big things with these is on the GMT 800s um, is that a lot of times these will bat wing. Uh, what I mean by that is, so like if I have this on my driver's door and everything, when I mount it on because of the angle of the door, it can't sit up, it bat wings it. And you can level these uh, by pulling, there's an end cap right here. Uh, you can fold the mirror forward and then pop that end cap off and there are four bolts in there and you can take six millimeter washers and typically two is the most you want to do but you to put two six millimeter washers on each of the top of the four bolts uh, the top two you put a six millimeter washer behind them and what that does uh, you put it in between um, the uh, in, in between the the bar for the mirror and bolt itself and what it does is it ends up canting the mirror down a little bit it angles it down so while this doesn't change the mounting surface itself doesn't change the mirror does change in its mount and that helps level it off uh, some people have put three on there but um, sometimes you have to actually modify this cover for for it to fit over the bolt head at that point so just something to play around with and everything I'll probably do that later on and make another video on that but uh, overall impression on this is uh, it's a good quality mirror. I mean, everything looks great. There's uh, the packaging was good for the shipping and everything. It's in great condition. There's no scratches. There's no marks or anything like that. All the plastic is in really good shape. Again, no scratches or mars or anything like that. Uh, the wiring looks great and intact. It's uh, it's got a nice protective wrap on it. All of the connections are correct. Everything there. And uh, like I said, the only the only real complaint I have is, um, so there's no act, there's actually no installation instructions. So, um, I mean, it, it is pretty straightforward, but um, thankfully I'm making an install video on how to do this uh, and just a quick review on these mirrors. And um, yeah, so uh, like I said, it's, it's great. It's a good product. It's, it's got some heft to it. It feels solid. Uh, really, uh, I won't be able to finish the review until I finish getting these installed get the wiring done for uh, getting uh, one just hooking up the wiring itself 
to the window switch, adding in the light, uh, the courtesy lights, uh, or the clearance lights, I should say, for, for the mirrors, and then taking it for a drive down the road and seeing if there's any shake or vibrations running through the mirror and causes it anything like that. Being able to really see the difference in uh, the standard mirror versus these, these new toe mirrors is just how much you can see. Uh, but before I do anything else, uh, like I said, I, I, I'm not a huge fan of Chrome, um, but these are actually a really good deal. So you can get these on Amazon. There's a link to them in the description below, and uh, you can get these on Amazon for about $190. But like I said, stick around later on in the video, and there will be a code that you can put in on Amazon to get 10% off of your order of these mirrors. So uh, I'm going to take, and I'm going to get busy taping these off and getting them changed over so that they are you know matched to the body so with that uh, i'm gonna make it real easy and in three two one and there you have it nice and painted see how easy that was so quick so simple it's really not that simple there's a lot of prep work and uh, a lot of time that goes into making it so it's a nice finish that is clear coated and everything is going to be protected uh, but it's honestly really not that bad. I'm not gonna go make you guys watch that whole process. That's really boring. So let's uh, let's go out to the truck and let's get these bad boys installed. All right, guys. So first things first is we are going to put your windows down on the front doors. Uh, the reason you want to do this is because when you pull the door panels off, you're gonna want to be able to take and reach through to hold the mirror because you don't want that mirror to fall, especially your brand new ones. You don't want them to fall and break. So uh, we're gonna put the windows down, and then with either an eight millimeter or a 5 16 wrench, you're going to pop the hood and disconnect the negative terminal off of your battery. We're gonna be doing some electrical work, and the last thing you want is um, either for you yourself to get shocked or to cause some electrical issues in your truck. So go ahead and disconnect that negative battery, and then we'll start taking this door panel off. All right, so I have another video on the channel that shows you how to do this, but I'm gonna show you again anyway. So in order to get this door panel off, start with a small flathead screwdriver and you're going to take and pop the cover off of that Torx head. You're going to take a pair of trim tool pliers and on this, just put the thing behind there, press down, presses out, it's one of those little Christmas tree fittings. Put all these to the side where you don't lose them. And now we can get the rest of it off. So we're gonna start by taking off, using our flathead screwdriver, and just popping out that lock mechanism. That will reveal seven millimeter bolt there. We have another seven millimeter here. And we're also gonna take that screwdriver and pop this cover off of the door handle. And that will reveal a 10 millimeter right there. So, we'll take the 10 first. And we'll pull that out. All right, now for the sevens. Again, one right below where the handle sits. Now, some guys think that you can do this just by pulling your switch panel. You cannot do that. There's a screw that goes up through the front to hold it in place. And if you just pull that panel out, you break the plastic around that screw. And then that doesn't, the panel doesn't want to sit in there properly anymore. And it'll bounce around and wiggle around and it can come loose. That's not what you want. So it's in there just a little bit. down into the door pocket it goes. Now just remember, your long seven millimeter is the one that goes at the handle. Your short one is the one that comes up here by the door lock. Now, one last thing you need to do to get this off is take and pull this cover off. And as you can see, it literally just pulls off. It's got a tab at the bottom that sits behind here and then two clips that go into those slots 
And then we're just gonna take this foam out. And we have three 10 millimeter bolts that hold the mirror on, but we have to take the door panel off first because we have to get this wire loom out of the way to get to this corner. In order to get the door panel off, we also need, like I said, we need to take this Torx head out. So do that. And this is a T20 Torx. Pull that out. And now all we have to do is take and lift up on the door panel and it all comes off just like that now door panel is not going to go anywhere just yet because we have a couple wiring connections there are two uh, I'm sorry there are three on the back of the, um, on, the on the underside of this switch uh, and then there is one right down here for your light uh, the lights real easy that's just a Quick little pull out. That one. And then these ones on the door panel on the inside of them. Let me see if I can move the camera here without dropping it. Ah, there we go. You can see them. We got one, two, and three right there. Uh, those are just going to have those little press buttons on them. You can see it right there. You can see that little press button. And you're just going to press that and then pull this out. So we're going to do that, and then we'll have this off. So I apologize, everybody. There are actually four connections. You have one, two, three that all have this little press button on there. Uh, you can see this one as well. But then this one, actually, ooh, that's really kind of pulling on that, isn't it? So let me lift this up just a little bit. There we go. Take a little tension off that line. This one you have that gray tab, and you need, actually need to take and there's a little press tab right here. It's kind of hard to do one handed, but you press that down. Let's see here. I can't really set up my camera anywhere, but you're going to press this tab, this little black tab down, and then this gray clip will flip down and that will release this. So, uh, let me see if I can maybe do this here. Let's see. I'm going to try it. There we go. Hopefully you guys saw that. And then that'll just slide right up. And what makes it really nice is that these are all labeled for you. You have black, green, blue, your PDM, and black. And it also says black on there. So uh, you kind of, it's kind of a cheat, so you know exactly what you're gonna be doing. As you can see right here, here's that screw I was telling about, telling you about that holds this panel in, and then it's got a clip all the way up here that holds it in. And a lot of people think it's just those clips, and if you pull that clip out, you end up breaking the plastic, plastic that this screw is set into. So that's why you don't wanna just rip those out. That's why you wanna actually take the door panel fully off in order to get those out. And now that that's off, now we can, Take care of this wiring. So you can see uh, that blue and black uh, that plug in to the bottom of your switch where it says blue and black. Um, those you can see, these are those white clips that I was telling you about that always break. And these are where those little black ones that they gave us will replace them. So we can actually take that trim tool and pop these out and replace them, which is really nice. So let's get this mirror off by taking these 10 millimeter bolts off. So before I take this mirror off, uh, I just thought of this, and that is, this is just the standard mirror. Uh, it's a power heated mirror uh, with a turn signal. You can see the turn signal in the mirror, kind of right here and everything. But this is the view you would normally have looking out of the vehicle and everything. So, uh, I mean, you can see all the junk I've got in my backyard here. But, I mean, it's, it's a standard mirror view, no big deal. Once we get this tow mirror on here, you're really gonna see a difference. So let's get those three 10 millimeters out. We'll get this mirror out of here and let you guys see this difference. All right, so like I said, 10 millimeter bolts. We're gonna take and just one. It's actually just the nuts, not the bolts. Which with that, kind of be careful when you're removing them because you don't want to drop them. Uh, granted, yes, 
Uh, the mirrors come with replacement ones, but you can also reuse these ones. And that's probably what I'm going to do, only because these have a nice uh, large body washer on them. And it just spreads that load out uh, for the mirror itself. The mirror just sags a little bit, but I'm not worried about that because also has these little white clips so we're just gonna this is where having your window open is huge I can just take grab the mirror and then just push those clips out and then those out of the way grab the rest of the mirror without it falling to the ground and voila. And just so you guys can see what I'm talking about. So this is the factory mirror nut. This is the replacement one. Now you can see it's got the teeth on it for it to be a non-slip. But look at that difference. This built-in body washer on this nut does a lot more for surface than this one. And with the extra weight of the toe mirror, I would much rather have a wider body washer. So uh, Yida, great job on that. That is a really good addition that you guys have there. Uh, but factory nuts are pretty good to go with. Uh, so yeah, all right, let's get this mirror on here. So we're gonna take off these little thread protectors. Now, this wire has got to have a way to come through here. So I think we're gonna have to cut a hole in this. So, I'm gonna take my screwdriver. Just kinda tear a hole. Oh, yay, so easy. Now, I can fish wires through like so and make sure that that is lined up and oh, look at that it's so pretty all right let's get it put on So important to have that window open so you can reach through. Alright, so this foam piece is a little big, but I think once the mirror actually gets compressed down with, uh, with the nuts, I don't think this foam piece is going to be that bad. We'll take a look at it afterwards, but yeah, look at that, wow. Don't fall. Stay. Don't fall, don't fall, don't fall. Please don't fall. Yay! So, uh, don't do what I just did, and instead, uh, put it in from this side of the door, not the outside. Or, have a nut handy, and you can just immediately put it on. And thankfully, these are the same thread, so they just go right on. Now, I will be honest, I have no idea what the torque spec is on these. Um, owner's manual doesn't say. Uh, the Chilton slash Hange manual doesn't say. So, I don't know. I don't really care. Uh, let's go ahead and get some of these. I can't zip tie those in place yet. I need to tighten up the nuts, otherwise we will be blogging it. So. Power tools do make this easier, but the only thing with stuff like this that I don't like using power tools for is that it's really easy to strip things out. And that's the last thing I want to do. So, make sure these are all nice and snugged 
up. See, that's why you go back. That one's really loose. They all feel about the same. There we go. And it really doesn't move, so. Yeah, okay. Now, obviously, I have not adjusted this, so this is just as it came from the factory, but, I mean, just that little bit, you can see just how much more you're really able to see. I mean, that is, that's pretty incredible in all reality. And, I mean, you know, you can angle your mirror different ways and everything and really set that up. So if I actually were to have that sitting straight out that is such a wider angle and I can take and can move that lower mirror and have my blind spot and everything you actually see a ton more in that that is beautiful so um, driver side is the exact same but let's get this put back together before we finish this one up I'm gonna take a flathead screwdriver and you're gonna notice uh, there are some raised ridges on uh, on this section you can actually just rotate this around a little bit. I'm gonna have that on both Where these raised portions are there is a clip and you can just press that you heard the click and That opens right up. See do the same thing on the body side and there we go now I need to take and run This wire through that loom so I'm gonna get a, uh, a metal coat hanger, a uh, piece, just a small piece of rod, and make it so that I can run this through and then into the cab. But before I take it into the cab, I also need to remove this trim piece and this floor trim piece. This floor trim piece is just gonna pop right up and out, and then I can pull this trim piece off, and that'll give me access to the wires when they come through the, from the door loom into the cab. All right, so I didn't have a metal coat hanger, but I did have some solid copper wire. That works just as well. So we're just gonna get this prepped before we pull those door panels off. We're just gonna prep it by undoing all of this wire. Just like this. I'm gonna take the ends, put, put them onto a solid wire or a metal coat hanger, whichever you have. A little bit of electrical tape. Go around them and go around the ends to protect it. There we go. What that does is that allows me to just hold the metal wire. You can see that lead and that ground follow with it. That'll let me go through there. This floor one, all we're gonna do, take our trim panel and just create a little gap. This has got those same just straight metal clips. Like I said, pop those up, wiggle it out. Like I said, these have the metal clips, four of them, that go into it right there. And then this piece right here, uh, we'll just take and we'll actually just pull it. There we go. It's easy. And that one's out. So now, we can focus back on this right here. Oh, there's the real trick. Just scrunch up that boot and Grab a pair of pliers. Guess what? There we go. We are through. Ha ha! All right. So now, just to make sure, move you guys back here so you can see a little bit more. All right, move you guys back so you can see a little bit more. I'm gonna take and put a little curve on this right through here and there it is we've made it all right now let me get some wires hooked up 
All right, now that we have that wire ran through the body, we'll come back over to the door, and we're gonna simply take our wiring and reach down through this upper opening up above the speaker, down to where this door opening is, grab the wire, pull it through, camera for you guys so you can see all this yeah so we ran it through the door up into here and then where this small plug is right here we're just gonna take and connect it only goes one way there we go now we can get the rest of this door back up and to do the mirror it's the exact same on the driver's side you're gonna do everything the exact same way, including the uh, the wire loom, everything. Everything is the exact same. Uh, we're gonna take and just hook our wiring back up now. It goes back on exactly how we had it before. All right, so all we're gonna do is where all of our connections are at on here. It's real simple. Just remember that when it comes to where your plugs are, that black is the rear, green, blue, big one, medium one. So we're actually just gonna take and kind of go in that order uh, in a roundabout way. We'll take and do the big one first. And see if I can find it. And then that gray tab back. And plug black is going to go in the very back. Make sure I'm putting them in the right way. This door handle. There we go. Blue goes all the way to the front. Black in the back. There we go. And now. This is just going to raise up and go into place. All right, with everything hooked up, all we're going to do is just raise the door panel up a little bit. Make sure everything lines up. And... Oh, I didn't get the bottom one in. There we go. And just give it a nice shove down once everything's in. Not everything's in. I missed one of the back clips. There it goes. Boom, see, that easy. Now it's just putting everything back together. And honestly, it's easiest just to go the reverse of what you want. So. All right, so there's the factory mirror, uh, no big deal. Uh, again, the uh, this little cover right here, uh, this one right here, I had taken that off, painted it to match the body and everything. There is the new one. That looks so much better. Oh my goodness. That makes the truck look so much better. Now you can see, uh, see that bat wing effect I'm talking about there where it's tilted up. Uh, again, uh, we're gonna pop this cover off and add a couple washers to lower that down. That'll look so much better once it's lowered. But even as it is, I mean, you look at this side, that looks really, really good versus that side it looks really weird like that but I really like that passenger side with that tow mirror that looks so good so we're gonna get this driver side done and and we'll get the wiring hooked up for the lighting big thanks to Yita Motors for making this video possible without them my 06 Avalanche wouldn't look anywhere near as good as it does now with their tow mirrors I have to say I, I'm blown away by it and you can have your truck looking just as good with a set of Yita Motor tow mirrors from Amazon.com. All you have to do is click on the link in the description below for a set of chrome mirrors for a 2003 to 2006 GMT 800 vehicle. You also can get them in black, and they also offer mirrors for 99 to 02 vehicles, which have a different electronic system than the 03 to 06. When you order them, make sure you're checking your year. A vehicle to make sure that they are compatible because the electronics are different but when you check out 
make sure you go down to that little discount code section and type in 10S8LKB9. Again, that's 10S8LKB9. You'll get 10% off your order and you'll have a set of Yida motor mirrors that make your truck look so much better than it ever did from the factory. Now, let's get back to that wiring. Let's go ahead and get these backup clearance lights taken care of. Now, you, like I said, there are two ways to hook these up, but uh, I'm gonna show you where you can hook them up, but I'm gonna be hooking them up to the reverse lights. Uh, that's when I want them to come on. So first, we're gonna take these two wires, this ground and this lead, and we need to run them all the way across the bottom of the dash behind this center console over to the driver's side. Uh, so I'm gonna take and I'm gonna try and run them up inside this cover and all the way across. You can see there's a little hole right there. We're gonna run right through that. And if I need to, I'll zip time in place, um, but I'm gonna try and tuck them up into this as much as possible so that they'll stay uh, the way they should. Uh, one thing you can do to help with that is just every few inches, just put a little wrap of electrical tape around both wires to tape them together. That keeps things from separating and getting loose and being all messy. So I'm gonna do that and then I'm gonna run those across and I will meet you on the driver's side. All right, so you can see uh, we have the wiring from our passenger side ran through and we also have the wiring from our driver's side. <clears throat> now when you're running everything up here, you gotta remember you have your pedals, your uh, parking brake, everything. Uh, you wanna have a nice clean install, so follow where your looms are. Uh, the factory put them in places so they're out of the way. They won't get caught up or anything like that. Use that knowledge to your advantage. So what you're gonna do is you're gonna tie your grounds together and you can do this uh, one or two ways. You can either just use a standard butt connection, which is one of these guys right here, or you can do what's called a T connection, which are these. And what that does is you just slip this over um, a complete line and you take the line that you're going to tie into your um, main line and you run in the other one press this tab down and then slip the cover over and that gives you a nice clean splice and you can use these to tie into existing lines all that what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna use one of these to tie the two grounds together and then just one one ground with a terminal end a ring terminal to this bolt, this stud right here, that's a 10 millimeter, uh, and I'm gonna just run, I'm gonna take this nut off, and after I have the ring terminal put on the wire, put that on there, and then put the nut back, and that's gonna act as my ground. Now, for power, you have two options. If you're wanting to do your reverse lights, you need to come to your vehicle BCM. Uh, this is directly under the driver's side of the dash. And you'll notice that right here you have a brown plug. You can unplug that and on uh, right up at the very top you have a light green wire. Uh, so I'm going to unplug this and I'm going to open up this sheathing just a little bit for access to that light green wire. And I'm going to do the same thing with my lead as I did with um, with my ground. I will tie my leads together um, and uh, using uh, using the proper connections which in my case is going to be uh, one of the T-splices and then uh, so I'll take my passenger lead hook it in the driver's side lead with a T-splice and then I'm gonna take that driver lead and connect it to the light green wire on this on this brown uh, on this brown harness and use a T-clip or a, a, a T-splice to clip into the light green wire on this. And that gives me my reverse lights. Uh, what that does is there's a switch in here so that when you put your truck in reverse, that's what then supplies power through that light, light green line. And that'll make it so those lamps come on when I put it in reverse. Your other option, uh, if you're wanting to have them come on, is you can pull this fuse panel and inside this harness right here, I'm not gonna open it up because there's no reason for me to because I'm not gonna be using this one. But if you open up this sheathing, there is a gray wire with a black line on it. And that is for 
all of your courtesy lamps. So your dome lights, if you have exterior mirrors with the uh, puddle lights on them, all of those things. And what that would do is when you, if you tie your lead into that same way, you know, get your leads connected together. In this case, for me, I'm using one of those T connections. And then you can do the same thing. Just use a T connection to connect it into that gray wire with the black line. And what that'll do is so whenever you unlock your truck or if you lock your truck or you turn on your dome lights, these lights will come on with that one. Now, like I said, I want to have them come on when I put it on in when I put it, the truck into reverse. It gives me extra light while backing up. So I am going to be coming down to the light green wire on that black or I'm, I'm sorry, on the brown harness right there. So I need to unplug that harness and also then use a T-splice to connect into it. All right, so this is so you guys can see what I mean by those T-connections. So you can see I have my lead running on the right side of this, uh, or I should say my ground is running on the right side of this. And this is the driver's side ground, and the passenger side comes in, and then this just gets crimped down together. Same for the lead. We've got the driver's side leading in, it runs all the way through, and then the passenger side plugs into one side, little metal tab gets squished, and you crimp it down. And that's it, and that's how you connect them. Now I can take and I can pull all this excess up, and what I'm gonna do from there is take this portion from the driver's side, since it's leading from here, this ties it all together, this leads to the end of my lines, I can take and get my distance made and everything that I need in order to put on that ring terminal onto my ground and connect it onto the, that bolt right up here. And then also uh, have enough to run down to that harness and plug into the light green wire on the brown harness of the BCM so that I can have these lights come on and be powered when I put the truck in reverse. All right, moment of truth, making sure that these courtesy lamps come on when I put it in reverse. Here we go. Bam, look at that, beautiful. Both sides lit up. Take it out of reverse. All right, everybody. Well, that is how you install these Uta Motor tow mirrors. And remember, check that link in the description for, below for where you can get them for your 03 to 06 GMT 800. And don't forget about that discount code to get 10% off. I will see you on the roads less traveled.